All right, guys, it's finally time for the true champion of Blades to get his video. That's right, I'm talking about Godfrey, one of the best Blades in the entire game. People have been begging me to make a video on Godfrey for a while because everyone knows he's so good that you don't really need to use any other Blades if you really know how to use Godfrey. So I cannot wait to show off the SSS tier Blade in action in this video. If you are looking forward to high quality Godfrey content, make sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help out so much. Let's get right into this. Godfrey, being the Chad that he is, purposely nerfs himself by using the Shield Hammer class. Typically not the greatest weapon, but it's a serviceable weapon for a character so broken. With this weapon, he can obtain an auto attack stat of over 1300 and a solid block rate that can cap out at 58% with the Dilaton chip. Godfrey, being an honorable warrior, doesn't rely on cheap tricks like critical hits, so he has a low critical hit rate which can only reach as high as 10% with the Moon Matter core chip. His defenses put most other blades to shame, being a high 30% physical and 25% ether, and his max health mod of 15% ensures whoever gets the blessing of using him will be able to take some hints and dish out the pain. I don't see Mithra with defenses this high, Godfrey must be better than her. Godfrey has a blade cooldown of 3 when maxed out. Yes, it might seem like one of the worst, but that's just the price of using Godfrey because it would be too broken if you could swap to him all the time. Let's take a look at Godfrey's affinity chart to see what really makes this monster what he is. Godfrey's first skill is Light of Justice. This will restore 0.6% of his health every second when under 30% health at level 1, rising up to 1.4% at level 5. You might recognize this skill because it's the same one another very good blade, Poppy Cutie Pie, has. That means it must be a fantastic skill since Cutie Pie has it, and just shows that Godfrey really is among the best blades in the game. That health restoration when under 30% health is so clutch and useful, just trust me. Godfrey's second skill is Fierce Fervor. This increases his damage to higher level enemies by 20% at level 1, rising up to 80% at level 5. 80% is one of the highest additive damage skills any tank class blade has, and can make Godfrey one of the strongest shield hammers, but honestly, who's really surprised here? We knew Godfrey was good. 80% damage is definitely a pretty nice damage increase though, and cannot be undervalued. That's nearly double damage with just a skill as long as you're fighting higher level enemies, which a lot of enemies in this game tend to be when you get to post game. Godfrey's final skill is Got the Guts. This will reduce all the damage taken by 24% when lower than 30% health at level 1, rising up to 36% damage reduction at level 5. Godfrey is resilient and he will not go down easily. My man becomes the super tank when he gets low on health. Yeah, sure, maybe this doesn't synergize super well with the fact that he also restores health when under this health range, but that just means Godfrey becomes even more of an unkillable machine when you're actually below 30% health. What a legend Godfrey is. You can clearly see the parallels with Poppy Cutie Pie here. An ice blade that has a skill that restores health under 30% health, a very nice additive skill, and another good defensive ability. It's easy to see why these two are two of the best in the game. But Godfrey doesn't rely on just his skills alone, no no no. Godfrey also has some specials that you will find yourself using a lot. Godfrey's level 1 special is Tough Break. It's a tough break for these enemies that they found themselves against Godfrey, I'll tell you that. This special will increase damage when enemies are targeting Godfrey, which should be all the time because he's definitely going to get aggro all the time. This special also has a very slow speed, but that's okay because it just gives the enemy more time to fear Godfrey. It's only a single hit because more would be overkill, and its damage ratio is pretty average because Godfrey is just holding back right now. It's 300 level 1, 460 at level 5, and 480 at max affinity. Personally, I wouldn't use this special much because he's got some better ones because he's Godfrey. Godfrey's level 2 special is Cold Judgment. This special is also only a single hit because any more would be overkill, and it also doesn't have a super high damage ratio because Godfrey doesn't need it. It starts at 400 at level 1, rises to 560 at level 5, and 580 at max affinity. What this special does do though, is increase damage to topple enemies, and wouldn't you know it, Morag has a topple art on Godfrey so you can get this bonus effect without too much issue. It even has a decent area of effect radius, so multiple enemies beware of the might of Godfrey. Truth be told, I probably still wouldn't use this special super often, simply because it's also not the fastest, and it doesn't have the greatest upsides, but that's okay because Godfrey has plenty more to offer. Godfrey's level 3 special is Justice Blizzard. This is another special that shows off the strength of Godfrey as his hammer comes down on those who deserve justice. This special is a huge 5 hits to really punish the enemy, and it once again has a nice area of effect radius. It may not be the fastest special either, 
and it may not have the highest damage ratio, being 500 at level 1, 660 at level 5, and 680 at max affinity, and it may not have the greatest bonus effect of increasing damage when below 30% health, which doesn't synergize well with Godfrey's ability to get health when under 30% health, and it may not really do much of anything notable, but dang it, it has heart, and that's all that really matters. Just another reason that Godfrey is the best. Godfrey's level 4 special is Whiteout. Godfrey takes you back to the early days of Pokemon as he slams the Hammer of Justice down upon his foes with his damage ratio of 1000. He even gets a 20% critical hit mod to really ramp up the damage. The special has no bonus effect because it's not needed since Godfrey just relies on his brute strength to defeat foes. The special even allows Godfrey to be completely invincible and set up fusion combos for his teammates to take advantage of because Godfrey is an honorable man. I think that's enough going over what Godfrey can do though. Let's take a look at setup. I believe Godfrey's best core chip is the Tachyon chip, and it's pretty obvious why. It has the best design. The other hammers just don't come close to the Hammer of Justice, so definitely use the Tachyon chip if you can. For Ox cores, Godfrey appreciates damage boost, so he can really put the herd on enemies. Affinity Max Attack and Outdoor Attack Up will make sure you can smite your foes with no issues thanks to Godfrey. On the accessory side, make sure you use that glamorous swimsuit on Morag. What other blade could make Morag wear a swimsuit? No one else but Godfrey because he is truly one of a kind. I also have crystal earrings on him because that allows him to gain party meter at rates never before seen and that can benefit not only Godfrey, but the entire team. Godfrey is very unselfish so it is very fitting. The final accessory showcases Godfrey's unselfish nature also as we use a burst symbol so it can boost weaker blades damage and chain attacks like Cutie Pie and Cosmos. What a nice guy Godfrey is. When it comes to pouch setup, we use a good mix of Art Recharge and Party Gauge Gain in order to use Arch as much as possible like Topple, as well as gain Party Meter even more efficiently with Crystal Earrings. Truly a match made in heaven. With all of that done, let's take a look at how to use Godfrey practically. Stick around till the end if you want to see how Godfrey's even better than Elma, but before that we're going to do a couple general things and just show off some general Godfrey use here and just how incredible he can be. So first up, we're just going to do Tyran and Titan Kuridol on normal mode, a bit of a, um, easier fight here. We're just going to easily use some Godfrey specials here. We're going to set our partners up to do a bit of damage as well, because we can do that with Godfrey. We have Cutie Pie and Earth Element right now, because we can use two Ice Combos and then finish with Cutie Pie, which, you know, is always pretty beneficial. So what we're going to do is, um, use our level 2 here on the launch. You can see we've got all the party meter we need right now. We got the big launch freeze there as well. So that's, that's a big chunk of damage coming in, as you see. 500,000, really, really huge right there. What we're going to do is use our topple as we use the um, permafrost crash with Cutie Pie here. That's going to give us a bit of a fusion combo setup. Good thing Godfrey has an amazing topple art to set this up. I'm like, Not many other blades can claim that and do stuff like this, right? So now we've got the chain attack ready to go, and we're going to see some huge Godfrey damage here. Watch this, watch this. It's going to blow your mind. Damage cap. Didn't even get a critical hit. Damage cap. He's so good. He is so good. And thanks to those burst symbols, we can also hit damage cap on Cosmos here. So she is lucky because of that burst symbol, otherwise she might not be able to otherwise. Cutie Pie can't even hit the damage cap. So, I mean, Godfrey is clearly the one who is carrying this team right now. I bet his level 2 is going to be able to easily hit a damage cap as well here. Although, we've already won the fight at this point. We already took this dude out. Yep, another easy damage cap for Godfrey. Just another day at the office here. And yeah, this, this is just a typical Godfrey fight. Nothing really to it. But you know what? We need to fight a bit of a tougher enemy. Godfrey's all about taking on the, the strongest enemies possible. That's the entire point of his skill that lets him fight higher enemy foes. He wants a challenge, so we're going to have a bigger challenge here by fighting Cloud Sea King Ken, level 140, in challenge mode, 50 million HP. Is it going to be a match for Godfrey? I don't think so. I think Godfrey's going to be okay. We're going to let him get the first move in. This just quick topple here, not really a big deal, nothing we're worried about. And then we're going to topple him pretty soon here, and then use our level 1 special. Thanks to the crystal earrings and everything else, we're going to have a lot of party meter here. So once our special finally goes off, we get the fusion on the break, and we're just going to throw out a chain attack, because we can. So we're just going to get some quick Godfrey damage in here. Um, Doesn't quite cap that, because he doesn't get the critical hit. That's not a big deal. This thing has a bit higher defenses. God Godfrey's going to need a bit more to get through them. Um, Ghostbusters is getting some damage caps there, because she's getting the critical hits. When she didn't critical hit, she can't do as much damage as Godfrey. 
Same story with Cutie Pie. I mean, maybe one day their damage will be as high as Godfrey, but right now, but right now it's just not going to happen. Without the critical hits, at least. So now we're going to topple him. We're going to keep doing the, the combo here. You know, you've got the topple plus art, and then Tora can launch for the launch plus art afterwards. And then we set up a freeze here. That gives us our party meter all the way back here, just from another combo there. And that's going to allow us to get a nice chunk of damage again with Godfrey. Unfortunately, Ken falls, so we don't get the fusion combo bonus here. But that's just to be expected. That's why you don't normally set up fusion combos on launch for chain attacks. But we're able to get another chain attack in and a lot of decent chunk of damage. This is another really good use of the um, burst symbols. It allows us to get a lot of damage in on Ken whenever we get our chain attack up, which is going to be very often because we've got the good setup on Godfrey to get our chain attack up as much as possible. Because Godfrey's very unselfish, as already stated. We've already dealt over a quarter of his health bar, but we're going to get a bigger chunk this time because we're going to finish the blade combo here. And that is going to allow us to do a two-orb chain attack. That's big. That's big. That's going to give us an entire new round, even more damage to do in the same chain attack. But I, th I think we're going to get him all the way under half HP here, actually. He Elemental Awakens, that's gonna, not going to matter, because once we do the chain attack, we're going to break the orb and get rid of the awakening status. So we've got Godfrey. He's going to be doing a big chunk of damage, but I'm going to let Elma move first there, just because that's going to be a quicker special so we can keep the fusion combo a bit longer, since Godfrey's level 1 is a bit slow. It's just a little bit slow. That's one, one of his only weaknesses, really. But that's okay. Like I said, it's just it's just to give the enemy a chance. It's to let them fear that they know Godfrey's level 1 is coming. And now we're going to use Godfrey's level 2 and get him right back out here, and that's going to be an easy damage cap. What, what, what would you expect? You wouldn't expect anything less from Godfrey here. Just an easy damage cap. We got Cosmos level 2 giving us the heals here, so we're already back at full health and ready to go for the second half of the fight here. No big deal at all. He's already down to, like, what, less than one-third of a health, health now? So, now we can just pretty much just wreck the rest of his health bar. This isn't going to be a big deal. We're able to use the topple to cancel him out of his special there, and now we can use another special here to get a big chunk of party meter again. There comes the tentacle storm. That's not really a big, big, big deal. We're just going to chain attack one more time here. Actually, I think it's going to be twice more. We need one more chain attack after this to kill him off. And I think I know exactly how we're going to do it. Maybe a double stack fusion combo with Freeze and Notorious Permacross Crash. Just, just an easy fight here. As long as we can get these fusion combos, as long as we can set up these chain attacks quickly, Godfrey can take out King Ken with basically no help at all. It, it, was all uh, it was all him. It was all him. We didn't really need anyone else. They're just here for the ride. We topple him out of the Cloud Breath. He's not going to get that stupid special off. And then we're going to just set up our um, final combo here. We've got the level 2. We're going to set up the freeze. Tor is ready to use the permacross crash. Crash. We got the break timing now. We're going to set that permacross crash. Permafrost crash. I can't even talk. We're going to set that up properly. And now we're going to just chain attack one more time. Just an easy, easy fight for Godfrey, as you might expect. Big damage cap there, thanks to Godfrey. Fusion combo set up beforehand. And we're going to see an easy damage cap here as well, I believe, because Godfrey can do it. No crit required, just easy, easy damage caps all day with Godfrey. And that's going to be the end of the fight. We're able to take out the toughest enemy on normal mode, or maybe one of the toughest enemies. He has the highest health, at least. There might be a couple enemies tougher, though, even still. And now, since the fight's over, I'm not even going to worry about continuing the chain attack. We're just going to end it right here. Just an easy fight, as you might expect. But what about... What can Godfrey do against Elma? You know that Elma Redux challenge everyone has trouble with? Well, I have a strategy for you. So, we just got only Godfrey here, and we got him on Rex this time, because we want to use this art called Iron Wall. So I have this special aux core on him called Dark Reflect, and that's going to reflect damage every time Godfrey blocks an attack. And with just some that aux core and some pouch items that give us art recharge, we can just use Iron Wall all day. And just be invincible. Look, we're not taking any damage at all. They can't do anything to us. Elma is useless. Godfrey is the hard counter here. We are taking no damage. And this is just the optimal meta. This is the new meta. This is the new meta. Godfrey is just broken. Zero damage at all in this fight. Nothing they can do. And I think this really just shows off the power of Godfrey. Truly, truly the best blade in the entire game. Now, of course... You might want some partners, or this fight might go on forever, and of course, if you do have partners, you might not have the aggro if you do this strategy, making it maybe not the greatest, 
but we can clearly see the defensive prowess of Godfrey here if you can manage to get aggro. Truly a broken character, and if you had like 10 years, you could probably finish this fight. And that is the power of Godfrey. I don't think there's much else to say, my friends. I think I clearly showcased the power of Godfrey in this video and how to use him very effectively. If you learned something, I hope you guys will leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel because I do appreciate all of the support so much. And please look forward to all the future blade guides. None of them are going to be as good as Godfrey, but you know what? We can still see how to use some lesser blades to a, a good degree here. So once again, I want to thank you guys for watching and supporting me. And, as always, have a wonderful day, everyone, and I'll see you back for the next guide.